Mm. I love the hot chocolate at the lab at the Hilton Colombo, which is also our host hotel. And here we are with another episode of Aperitif with Kumar with my guest, the other senior once girl, Umaria. It's so, Umara, sorry. It's Umara. Sorry, apologies. <laughs> Umara. So, Umara, which, who is the better singer, Umaria or Umara? She says that you are. I think it's my sister, Umaria. But you all are exchanging compliments. So who's, who's... Because that's the truth, I think, that she's a brilliant singer. She's the best singer in Sri Lanka. I think so. What makes you say that? If she were not your sister? I would still choose Umaria. It's her work ethic, her hard work, her commitment, um, and the amount of practice and effort so that she does. Are you not all that? Same, but you're asking me the question. I can't compliment myself because I don't believe I'm the only person that can sing in this country. My sister is the best to me. <laughs> okay, as a singer, what do you owe your parents, Aisha and Tony? Everything. Everything about our lives, our accomplishments, everything. We owe every single bit. Even the fact that we're breathing today, I really owe it to my parents, both of them. So Tony was a tiger with his daughters and Aisha was a tigress. I always say that, the little girls, I knew them like many, many years ago. Are you a tigress where your son is concerned? I am. Very much so, yes. You also go on record as being the, the first and the youngest ever... Female audio engineer in Sri Lanka? Yes. How did that um, happen? Um, I was about 15 years old when I actually auditioned uh, to sing on Bhatian Santosh's song Shahina through Sri, Sri Shyamalangan. So I auditioned, she auditioned us first and then we sang Shahina and then we met BNS and then we met them backstage at a couple of school events and I was a member of the Intra Club as well. Then school? Um, I went to Muslim Ladies College. Um, and yeah, and that's how everything fell into place. And then I joined BNS and I got straight right into audio engineering. Learned Tanta Bhatia Jayakodi as well as Sachit Piris. They helped me um, understand and learn audio engineering because I love music and you know, sound. the sound, understanding that and fine tuning your ears is, is a whole other thing. So. so has that helped you with your job and work as a singer? Oh, most definitely. I think it's what important. It the fact that you engineer sound yeah. you play with sound yeah. in terms of uh, as a performer out there has that helped you oh most definitely if yes how in, in so many way? in so many ways i mean analyzing the sound and understanding the audience and what they want from us performance wise and beyond the performance the sound and what is loud what is not loud and what is missing and even you know to do spontaneous things on stage you have to be ready for it i think that, that is what entertainment is all about how spontaneous is spontaneous very spontaneous it's just like that i mean anything can happen i mean especially when you're playing with a live band you could lose i mean sounds could just go off the right. guitar might go off or the pianos or whatever and then how are you going to carry on with the performance you just don't go uh, because people spend an amount, yes, you know, and you're to watch there, you perform. You're, you're kind of stuck and you, 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 you got to move on. Basically. Yeah, and it's also experience. Yes, sure, it sure. comes with experience. <laughs> uh, your vocal range is four and a half octaves. Yes. The world record is? Five yeah. octaves for a female and that is Mariah Carey. So are you working on the balance? <laughs> <laughs> the balance half an octave. See, there are good days where we could actually surpass that that, that limit. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, but then if you're talking about being comfortable in your own voice or whatever it is, four and a half is what we're comfortable in singing within. Um, but mastering that and to come to that point, we work and really hard. And maintaining it. And maintain. So, how do you maintain your vocal range at four and a half? Um, I don't take frizzy drinks. Um, at all? At all. Enjoy Maybe your once hot a blue chocolate. moon. Yeah, thank you very much. I will. Thank you, uh, Mr. Colombo, our host hotel. <laughs> yes. Uh, and um, yeah, I drink. try to drink room temperature water at all times Iced, instead of huh? ice. No, I try to avoid it. It's tempting, but no. Ice cream? I'm not a fan of ice cream, thankfully, yeah. but sweets, yes. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there are cookies here. Yeah, I know. sweet cookies. I shall have both of them. <laughs> Did you know that sunglasses require different tints for different activities? Well, talk to Vision Care and let the experienced staff help you select the correct pair of sunglasses for your hectic lifestyle. As Sri Lanka's market leader in eye care, 
Vision Care is all over Sri Lanka with 60 branches in all major cities. So think of eye care, think of Vision Care. Now, you have more than a thousand students in the Umaria Music Studio. Tell me a good reason why I should send my daughter to you for music and not to X and not to Y and not to Z. Okay, um, number one, I don't put my goal as to conduct the classes. Okay. okay, I conduct the classes personally Thousand myself. Students. Yes, I have them in sets, like in batches. So that's how I conduct my classes. So it's a one on one session with my students. Um, I conduct all the classes. Only if there's an emergency, I will not conduct the class, but they will be notified. Um, and another reason is I work and I teach the technical side of singing, not just singing a song. So you want to come to my class, I'm not going to print out lyrics for you and give it to you and say, okay, we're going to sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star for one hour. You're trying to impress me. You're trying to impress the teacher by singing a song. Oh, okay, yeah, you sounded really good. But then the technical aspect of it, you're not being taught. So the difference with my academy is I work on the technical perspective of singing. So in your book, how important is performance and how important is the technical to it? 50-50? 50-50 most definitely. I think performance-wise, it is self-confidence. If you're confident about your subject and what, if, if singing is what you want to do, if you're really good at singing, if you have definitely mastered the art the right way, that is self-confidence. And you don't need to be pretentious and try to be something else that you're not. But then when you're singing the song, because of the confidence that you have, I'm not talking about, you know, flying up there, but then you know that you can sing, you know the subject. It's like doing a business degree or whatever it is, and being a businessman, you know the subject. So in terms of singing, it's the same thing. You learn the subject. When you learn the subject, there are no shortcuts. You don't need to camouflage anything. So do you have instances where parents bring reluctant children to sing, to be taught, to be trained to sing? Oh, the yeah. kids hate it. Oh, yeah. What do you do? I Okay, also Money another is difference good. is... You can earn. Yeah, I mean, of course, <laughs> if that's the case... The kids hating. I'll be having like six vehicles by now. Exactly. <laughs> but I do it with a lot of passion. So do you accept all those kids? Even the I don't. Every student has to pass an audition. I audition all of them, personally. So techniques as in phrasing, as in breathing, as in... Breathing as in, is as the in most else. important thing when it comes to singing. Without breathing, you can't sustain any notes. You can't do the vibratos and the staccatos and la 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 la. Uh, so, yeah, what I do is I try to understand them as a person first. So, yes, it's music, but I get into their shoes. I go down to their level and understand them first. They need to feel comfortable around me. So I first build a relationship. We get comfortable. And then we talk about what you want to sing. What, what sort of music do you listen to? And then I get you to sing a song. And then I assess you. I, you know, experiment with your vocal range. And then I do this thing called note recognition to see if you can recognize notes. Just okay. like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So things like that. They have to do pass have, that exam. Do you have perfect pitch? Me? Yeah. I wouldn't say 100%. Almost there. I'm human. I don't believe in being perfect. Almost. Okay, okay. But I can listen. Yeah, I'm a good listener. I can I can detect things well. On the 12th of December this year, eight years, eight days before my birthday, yes, uh, would be your 20th wedding anniversary. Not how can it be 20th? I'm not that old. It's 10. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> my 10th <laughs> wedding. <laughs> <anniversary. laughs> I should be like. <laughs> 20th is your birthday. Uh, so your 10th your wedding anniversary. And uh, Rifki, your husband, is he also a musician? No, he thinks he is. What do you think he is? He thinks everything that I am is because of him, which is not the case. <laughs> Rifki. <laughs> He's actually into uh, gems and jewelry. Uh, we have our own company in Hong Kong. Um, so that is why we are based. We were we shuffled back and forth. And then now we are you know 100% based in, in, in Hong Kong. Um, and yeah, he thinks, yeah. So you <laughs> shuttle between between Colombo and yes. Hong Kong because you live and work here and you yes. live and work there as well. Yeah, correct. And your son Ryan, do you have time for your son Ryan, who is Ryan, who is seven years old? Yes, I. He's like my all. I mean. Yeah, he could be your all, but then when he's in Hong Kong and you're here, it's teaching. See, you see him like once a month or twice a month. Yeah, you know? it's really, really difficult i mean even now um with the, with the lockdown and everything with, with the quarantine and everything it's been really hard i've been away from them for the longest and it's really difficult i actually question myself sometimes and you know how am i even doing this 
but I guess you know God is on my side and um, I, I understand the situation and I have a, an amazing husband he's really understanding and I miss my son I mean what can I say it's tough it's tough but life goes on did your mother ever have a passion for shoes I sh mom did she had the craziest uh, so it's come down the generation I still remember you know, the two that, seen her once yes. girls have about uh, I don't know about 500 or so many hundreds of pairs of shoes if you uh, take a lifespan yes <laughs> in your lifespan uh, Umaria and Umara yeah. and Aisha yeah. put together we have how many pairs of shoes quite a few quite a few one of the reasons I wanted to be a singer was my mom it's her style her sense of style I still remember you know when when we were in Germany and the band used to rehearse all of the cousins would like be put in one corner chuck the milk bottle and then okay you guys we're going to do the rehearsal so we would just watch them perform and she was just perfect very calm and very statuesque yes. and all the same she, she the reason I am what I am today is because of my mom and her shoes. Mind you, we wear clogs and the, the, the ones with the platforms. But she she used to wear the pencil heels and perform. So I we do that too. But then I, I still having four kids, by the way. So family After shoes, kids. family shoes. You like same shoes as well? Unfortunately, me and my mom we can, but not not with Umaria because her feet are smaller than us. <laughs> So she's the unlucky one. <laughs> she's the unlucky one, but she's the lucky one. We are the unlucky people as well. Because okay. if you like something of hers, she's like, sorry guys. Yeah. But she can't take <laughs> yours either. So, so on that on that note of uh, Umaria being unlucky with shoes, she cannot wear her mother's shoes or sister's shoes. That brings the chat one to a close with my guest Umara. Correct. Sing her once. Uh, I'm correct there, okay? You're correct. Absolutely. <laughs> right. On aperitif with Kumar at our host hotel, the Hilton Colombo, and our hair and beard partner, Ramli Fernandez Salons. We catch you again on Chat 2. We talk to her, this young lady, all about her life and work in Hong Kong and uh, what she thinks about autism uh, and about uh, depression. Interesting chat coming up. Catch you soon.